thank you. Well, let's start uh, with remembering our high school days. So close your eyes or keep them open, but try to think back in your uh, early years when you were at high school. And it should be a little easy to remember uh, the days you were in high school because it was a time of big changes. Uh, we were all boys or girls when we entered high school and we changed into grown-up adults, men, women. And with that change, uh, some things also in your body changed. <coughs> and if you look back at school, we were busy uh, trying to find uh, our identity or the identity of the group we wanted to belong to. And uh, remember, one of the people in your class, there was usually it was a boy, maybe you were one of them, maybe I was one of them, but I won't tell you. Uh, he was a regular guy, not uh, the most popular one, but also not a misfit in your class. But there was something strange with him, because he didn't notice that he, his body was changing and he was going to sweat, and you saw some stains under his armpits. And the bad thing for this poor guy was that uh, for months he would walk around uh, at school and uh, seeing people talking to each other, uh, making funny jokes, pointing at him, but he didn't know what was wrong. Until, fortunately, someone had the courage to tell this boy about this little shortcoming he had, and basically uh, the boy was most commonly happy about this feedback because this boy could change his behavior, use deodorant, and after a few weeks of uh, using deodorant, he was not the talk of the school anymore. He was not the boy who was uh, trying to be, or the boy who was uh, bullied about his uh, body odors. So I think this is an example we all remember uh, of the struggles and also the benefits of uh, getting feedback. The struggles, because it's both for the receiver as for the one who gives feedback, it's hard to uh, tell feedback. It's uh, an intimate, shocking conclusion to find out what your blind spots are, and for the one who gives you feedback, it's, he's uncertain how you will respond or react to it. But also, benefits of feedback, because uh, it will point out some blind spots on you. It will uh, make clear why people uh, react strangely uh, to you, uh, which you don't understand why they do it, but also uh, you can change something about your behavior if you are aware of your, your blind spots. So feedback is a very strong instrument in your personal development, right? So how come that we don't get that much feedback from our peers? If we look at uh, our daily jobs, uh, feedback is not something that we uh, encounter every day. Sometimes, we, sometimes not. Uh, and I want uh, to, uh, to point out a, a study that was uh, conducted by uh, Francesca Cole. She's a professor at Harvard Business University uh, in the Department of Organization, uh, Market and uh, Negotiations. And she made a study last year uh, in which she concluded that we uh, uh, reject people who give us critical feedback. Uh, we stop listening to their advice, and in the end, we end up with not talking to them as a whole, although we might grow from those people. On the other hand, we, we tend to bond with people who only see our positive qualities, because it feels comfortable. So basically, we try to reject peers that give us critical feedback, uh, which pre uh, prevents us from growing. So don't we get any feedback then at all? Oh, yes, we do. Remember the high school years? These are the peers. Someone else was giving us feedback. The professor was giving us feedback. And we acted upon that feedback in trying to improve ourselves to make sure we pass the exams. There's someone else who was giving you feedback, and that's your boss. <laughs> and also, you're, you tend to listen to your boss and try to improve 
uh, your behavior or improve your skills because of the feedback from your boss. So what makes your boss and the teacher different from your peers? Well, one thing they have is authority. And authority is a great thing. Authority ensures that people are listening to you. If you don't have authority, uh, people start thinking, who are you to tell me this? So a teacher has authority. Your boss has authority. And if you receive feedback from someone who has authority, you tend to listen to it carefully and try to do something with it. And we're very aware of uh, this authority, especially if you look at the C-level or the, ma the management board in your company. They hire external coaches or trainers for themselves to improve themselves, preferably the best in the field of the uh, <coughs> expertise they want to improve themselves in. And their behavior translates into the organization on lower levels. Uh, training... Uh, corporate training, professional training, is a million, billion dollar business in this world. You can find training on every topic. You can find training on communication skills, on programming, on negotiation, on time management, but also trainings on improving your posture when you're seated uh, behind your computer or learning how to breathe properly. There is training in everything. And your company is paying good money to make sure you get trained and improve yourself and they hire those external authoritative people to have you trained properly. But basically, hiring this external authority seems to be not enough. There has been a lot of studies on uh, the effect of training in people uh, on the return on investment for the company after they have trained their people. And uh, the common conclusion from those studies is that only 15% of the subject matter that was used during the training uh, is adopted by the employees uh, three months after the training. So what happened to the other 85%? The other 85% got lost due to the daily worries all the employees had after the training. So how come that this authority trainer who was hired, who was paid better than your boss of the, <laughs> most of the time, does not get the same effect as your teacher and your boss have if they provide you with feedback. The answer you can find is the fact that your teacher and your boss have some power over you. Think back again to your high school. Uh, your teacher had the power, if you don't follow up on the feedback, chances are high you will fail your test. On the other hand, if you follow up on the feedback, you will increase your chance to pass the test. And the same sounds for your boss. He decides whether or not you get fired or whether or not you get promoted. So next to authority, good feedback needs also power, right? So it is very hard for peers to provide each other with feedback. But it is possible for peers to provide each other for, with feedback. Yes, peers can provide feedback. And you can start today with it. There's only one uh, thing you have to keep in mind if you want to provide feedback. Make sure you uh, make the one who receives feedback aware of the consequences. In consequences, is the key to uh, a proper follow-up on your feedback. So before I thank you for listening to this talk, I want you to remember one thing. Either when you give or receive feedback, please make sure you connect consequences with the feedback. The true value of feedback is not in the feedback itself, but it's in the receiver of the feedback follow following up on it. So when you receive feedback and you want to follow up in, on it, make sure that you are aware of the consequences of not or of do following up on the feedback. On the other hand, if you give feedback, don't worry about the quality of your feedback. Worry about the quality of your consequences. 
Without the consequences, you will never reach the other end. Thank you very much. Thank you.